Good day and welcome to another A Week at the Plot Tuesday segment. Ten past two at the moment. I've been at my desk all of yesterday and all of this morning and I've sort of pocketed a couple of hours this afternoon to be here. And I'm just so pleased to have got down and the weather is just sensational. It's one of those warm yet crisp autumn days. It's just glorious. Lots of sun, fantastic blue sky, white clouds. Yeah, all pretty good. I'm going to do some strimming a little bit later, but one of the things I wanted to do first was get some seed saving done. And this is seed saving of our cucumbers. So we grew cucumbers this year from seeds that Vivi had given us, seeds that she has saved year on year on year. And I am doing very similar today to what she does. However, when she was here a few weeks ago, we were looking at our cucumbers and there was one that was quite square. Square like that. And there's one that's very round. And the one that's square I've decided to save seeds from and the one that is round. The one that's round is the typical cucumber shape. So actually that's that's atypical of cucumber. So if you're going to be saving seed from anything, make sure it's the best and make sure it's typical of the variety that you want to save. And remember, do not save F1 seeds. With cucumbers, there is a cross of there's a danger of cross pollination, but I'm hoping that ours will not have pollinated with others and crossed with others. Fingers crossed. But with F ones, they're bred really just for one season, and if you save the seed from an F one variety, it is so unlikely to come true to what you grew. So do not save seeds from F1. That's why we talk about sort of heritage, open pollinated, hand pollinated seeds. So yeah, you know, always be careful of that. So what I'm doing is I'm saving seeds from a square one and a round one. And I'm going to grow the two seeds on next year, hopefully, to see if one the square one produces a square cucumber and the round one produces a typical one. I don't know. Maybe they'll produce exactly the same, but it will be interesting to see. So another highly scientific experiment about to begin. One, the square one, is already in the polytunnel. The other one, the round one, is still in the bed. So let's go and have a quick look at it. So we're in the cucumber bed now, as you can see. These two have really gone over but they're still going to be used for food they're going to go into a cucumber and sultana curry just put those over there look at these weeds that have grown this one oh that's cold oh it's cold this one is one that we're going to save seeds from you can see it's gone quite yellow and in fact it's just beginning to i'm not sure if you can see just beginning I think the frost may have just got to it last night. This one is one that we could pick and let ripen and save seeds from. But actually, we've already got two, this one and the one in the poly. So I'm going to take this one and let save seeds from this one and the other one. This is the square one I was talking about can see it's a little bit square you can also see it's quite ripe ripe for saving seeds from quite squidgy this one here is not quite soft yet this one you can see is really well hopefully you can see it gives this one is still quite firm I'm going to take this one home and put it on the windowsill which Richard will absolutely adore. So today I'm just going to save seeds from this one but when I do this one I will do it in exactly the same way. Let's just get a closer in shot of this one. So I've got the cucumber, I've got this um, pot base, pot tray, 
just really because it's easier to do it on here than it is in the, the big gravel tray. A knife and a glass jar. So let's... Ooh, yum. Well, you can see there, hopefully, all these seeds. So let's just, let's get the seeds out. So I'm just using the, the knife to scrape seeds away. And don't worry about there being sort of gel in there. You, you want that because that's going to help when we take this home. It's going to help ferment. Maybe if we cut it in half completely. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice smell. <laughs> oh. I think that's got a few more in there. You can see how many seeds you get. Oh, that's really pongy this side. If you don't mind your fingers getting in places like that, then get your fingers in there. There's some bigger bits here, just taking the seeds off those. Because we do want this to ferment, but we don't want to much of that flesh in there, ideally. Only for sorting purposes, I mean. So there we are. Seeds. And I can see there's a few there. That one doesn't look quite viable to me. It looks a bit thin. But then you look next to it here, nice sort of fat seed there. Yeah, there's a sort of thinner one there. But we can sort out the seeds at a later date. Oh. there. Waste not, want not, as my mum would say. Yum! Yum, yum, yum. Did I just splosh one out? Yes. Oh, and there's one over here that I've missed. That will do. Now when I get home, oh, do I have some water here? Do I have water here? Yes, that'll do. Don't want the grass in it. Let me see. It's quite liquidy already. There we are. So that is going to sit on a windowsill that gets a little bit of sunlight, but not a lot, for three days. And I'll give it a shake every now and again. I love saving seeds. <laughs> I really do.
and this one is also coming home but maybe I'll just give it a bit of a clean before I do because I think Richard might take a bit of umbrage if it's a bit too dirty on the windowsill yeah yay for seed saving I mean it really makes sense and saves you money as I say do not save from f1 varieties that you have grown or are there f2 varieties I read something about f2 but certainly not F1 varieties. I think F2 would be one generation away from F1. But anyway, if they've got an F in them, <laughs> don't save seed from them. These, as I say, Vivi has had for years and she saved them year on year. We've grown from them this year. And this square cucumber is um, has given us a lot of seeds, you know. And what we're going to do is we're going to let this ferment in here for about three days, give it a shake every day and undo the top. Um, that's what I do. And then do the top back up. And after about three or four days, the gel around the seed, just like with tomatoes, will have broken down. And then you'll be able to put these into a sieve, wash them in uh, running water. And then any seeds that are obviously not mature seeds so any that are flat or marked or may just be misshapen throw those away put those into the compost they will decompose in there absolutely fine the others um dry tap with a, a i use loo paper just tap them with loo paper and then leave them out for two three weeks in your home generally a person's home they will dry really really well and after two or three weeks, we'll put them into a paper envelope. We will put the name on them. And when we harvested the seeds, which is obviously October 22 in this case, and then I'll leave them out for another two or three weeks in that paper envelope. Make sure they're really, really bone dry. And then they will go into an airtight container in our fridge. And that airtight container where we keep all our seeds that has some silica sachets in it so the silica will absorb the water if any water is in there or gets in there so yeah you know i mean i remember buying i think it may have been some telegraph cucumber seeds a few years ago and i think i paid three pound fifty they were organic 3.95 i paid they were organic 3.95 and I got four seeds. Get more than four seeds out of those. More like sort of 40 times three or times four or times five, you know. I reckon we'll get 120 to 200 seeds out of these. And this is just the square one. We've got the round cucumber to do as well. Right, I am going to leave it there. It is getting gorgeously warm now. It really is in the sun. In fact, quite hot. I've already taken one layer off. I think I'm going to take this other layer off now. And I'm going to carry on and do maybe half an hour of strimming just to tidy the plot and get my mind a little bit straighter. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. It's still Tuesday afternoon and I'm rather enjoying this sunshine. It really is rather, rather beautiful. And I'm going to break the relative quiet by doing some strimming. But I won't be strimming this area here because this is very much Frog Alley up to that Santalina over there and the flax. This has just sort of overgrown as we know, but down here are so many frogs that that is going to wait for next week. Job for me to do next week because I will be doing it with shears rather than with my electric strimmer. But what I do do when I am strimming or before I'm strimming, because it's part of what I do, is I get down on the ground and before I strim an area, so before I strim this area here, up to the base of the, what's that umbrella stand, I will go along just making sure 
nothing jumps out because that is where frogs hide at the moment. We've also got frogs in our beetroot, which isn't a problem. And of course, when I come over here to Strim, I will be doing exactly the same thing. Fingers, preferably gloved, which I didn't do then, down so that if there are any tiny stinging nettles or anything else, you don't get stung. But yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing, strimming. Just looking at this Portuguese cabbage crossed with Nero di Toscana. Still looking really healthy. Look at those. Look at those. Oh, is that a... Yeah, let's get rid of that. Yeah, don't want that. That's a fan of aphids, that. And um, this bit broke off one day, or it bent over. I bent it over. I accidentally sat on it, actually. And it bent over, but look how it's sprouting from the bottom. So I'm just leaving that be and harvesting it. And then the Portuguese cabbage we put in last week. They've been in for a few days now. They're all looking okay. We've got a beetroot over there that needs to come out. But it is looking glorious whilst there's an awful lot of work to do at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. But actually all I'm going to do now is strim and get on with that job and hopefully things will look a little bit tidier afterwards. job done or partly done at least it's a little more pleasing to the eye which at the moment I feel I need yeah just just a bit neater just a bit neater and of course in a couple of weeks time we're going to be sowing and planting into these two beds yeah but that's for another week now i'm going to get on and do something else bye good day we had a frost on the roof of our extension last night and just coming over here i'm noticing that I think this leaf here has been bitten by frost. Just a little bit. And of course this is where our wolf and butternuts are. So I've decided that I'm going to take up the harvest of wolf and butternuts that we do have. There is one here Look, that's been bitten by frost as well. Can you see? There's that one, which is really quite immature. So I may leave that one in and just fleece it. But the others, which are changing colour, like here. Oh yeah, look, more, more here, more here. Yeah, like these that are changing colour, they're going to come in. But one that... <laughs> isn't changing colour is one over here can't remember if I've showed you this one look at that wolf and butternut dark dark green very bizarre there's the one next to it that's the colour I'm expecting but that one, yeah, is just dark green. 
So what I am going to do when I harvest these, if there is some available, let's just pull these back, lift that up. What I'm gonna do is not cut here, but I'm gonna cut up here a good couple of inches away from where it, it joins. Sometimes you have a T-bar, um, not in this case, but well, sort of, there's a bit of tea and there's a bit of tea there and there. But yeah, I'm just gonna cut up here and then that will give this stem a really good amount to dry off before it actually hits the top. But yeah, that's not a bad size, is it? Not bad. Right, I'm gonna get them in and then we can count them up. There we have our harvest of butternuts, including this funny green one here. I will most probably use this one first, I think. I might, if it's soft enough, I might use it as a marrow, but I will taste the flesh before I cook it to see if it's bitter. And if the flesh is bitter, I will put it into the compost bin um, because it's not good to eat any bitter cucurbits it's just not so you know cucumbers and um, courgettes and and um, squash it's just not sensible um, I was talking about a tea I think you can see the tea here that one's got a little bit of tea by in fact they all have it's just the way that they're there I've cut them if I turn that one round a bit you can see there's quite a bit there and I've given them a wipe over and a little wash down here. And now these are going to go home with me and they will cure at home on a windowsill. It's, what's that, eight, nine, ten. So these are quite small, but that will be a meal for, one will be a meal for Richard and I, and this one will be a meal for Richard and I. You know, it, it, yeah, it's not a great harvest, but it's better than the harvest we've had over the previous years with butternuts. You may remember a good few years ago when we were growing them vertically, we had a fantastic number of, I think, six plants. Here we got 10 off eight plants, and I think last time they did so well, we got about 14 off six plants, something like that. And they were all different shapes and sizes. So they were our butternut family. And they lasted really, really well. You can see this one is sort of taking on quite a lot of colour. You can see in here there's still green flecks. These are still to mature fully. Over here they're, they're sort of much more mature than these are. But yeah, I'm really pleased with what we've got. Go away, Mr Fly. Yeah, definitely. Definitely pleased with those. Right, I'm going to leave it there and I will see you very soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot. Bye. Good day. Not at the plot, but at Castle Cornet in Guernsey. And this is General Lambert's garden, which has got a real mix of herbs, some veggies, and then Richard over there. <laughs> he said that the lavender needs a really good cut back. So yeah. And then over here where Richard's getting in the way sorry. is tomatoes. Look at that. And then through here, you see down there, that's where a 13 gun salute will be at noon or will happen at noon. But yeah, I don't remember this garden. I mean, the last time I was at Castle Cornet, the clock up there was many, many years ago. Passion flower there. Yeah. 
rather lovely. And then we'll just go up these steps. I think we'll come up here to watch the gun salute. That's the harbour, so this is where Dad worked for over 40 years. Oh, big cannon there. Yeah, you can see workmen down there doing work. There's a lot of work happening actually in Guernsey at the moment. Yeah. And what's that clock say? It says 11 o'clock. So we may come up here and watch the salute at noon. But yeah, that's St Peterport Harbour, rather shrouded in misty drizzle. And then, I don't know if you can see in the distance, those two chimneys to the right of that is where Mum used to live before she went into the care home. But yeah, General Lambert's Garden. Oh, no, oh look, there's an orchard over there, a little orchard as well. You see that? What? We want, he wants to go in because he says it's wet. Right, see you soon. Bye. Good day. It's Sunday afternoon and I'm back at the plot. Lots to do, including taking out these mainly Guernsey Island tomatoes and most of them will be green tomato curry and today lots to do over here as well but I'm just going to concentrate on these two beds today and in fact just half of these two beds the top half from where this chicory is here up and from above the celeriac here up I'm going to leave for flowers but the lower end I'm just going to weed because I'm going to be using those two areas early next year so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a weed any weeds in there I will be taking out I'll be leaving in the calendula because that can easily come out next year. I'll be taking out the verbascum. I'll most probably move that verbascum to sit next to that one there. And I'll be leaving in the feverfew. And also these little pansies that have self-seeded. But yeah, the, the rest is going to come out. So, celeriac in here and then a good weed, taking everything out apart from the calendula and then similar in here apart from the calendula, feverfew and the pansies. So I'm just going to get on and do that. I suppose I could move these pansies up there. Hmm. Anyway, I'm just going to crack on and do that. Not a difficult job and not a time-consuming job. Pretty shattered as it is anyway from our travels over the past few days. It seems to have been a, a short period with lots of travel, but you know, that's, that's fine. We got to see mum, which was the main thing. So yeah, I'm just gonna crack on and get on my hands and knees and weed these two beds or the lower half of these two beds about an hour later and I've we did the lower half of both of these beds I've pulled perennial weeds that I don't want out of that bed over there which has got an awful lot of California poppy and nigella love in the mist growing in it now I've also had a tidy up little tidy up of this bed once I take the plants out I most probably won't take them out actually once I get onto this bed 
I will likely just cover it in cardboard and let the plants die underneath it. But at the moment, what I've done is I've gone through and I've taken out perennial weeds and ones that are really sort of deep rooted, dandelions, that type of thing. Then I've we did the um, what is this? Oh, saffron. You can see saffron is beginning to shoot. So I've given that a weed. There was a hedgehog staring at me down from there whilst I was doing that. And it's uh, run off back to the back of the polytunnel. I've given the tubs of asparagus a bit of a weed. And then I started doing some pulling of bigger weeds in this bed, but was wearing a bit at that and decided to come over here because I thought it would be easier. But actually when I got over here, I just was exhausted and felt a little bit dizzy. So time to give up for the day. So yeah, quite a bit of weeding much much more to do but at least i've started making headway and i know some people will be saying well don't worry about certain weeds go no dig blah 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 i'm taking out the deep rooted weeds and the grasses that i know that no dig is not going to get rid of so yeah so i've left the calendula in i've left the fever few in I moved the verbascum that was here to over here and I've moved the um, self-seeded pansies that were there to here and again in this area I've taken out perennial weeds that I didn't want so actually I'm quite happy with uh, an hour or so's work this afternoon so quite a busy Tuesday with quite a lot done and then we had a good few days in Guernsey and of course we saw that lovely garden at Castle Cornet and today back here doing some weeding doing some much needed weeding but you know what just starting to get on top of things no starting to do things helps you think that you can get on top of things so yeah pleased with that what I did notice though in one of the beds we've got quite a bit of oxalis beginning to take hold and oxalis maybe it's not quite as bad as sankfoil but oxalis is one of those plants particularly the creeping one that if it takes hold in a bed it really can take hold in a bed and it has little corms and also a taproot and it's good to get that whole thing out if you can so yeah that's what i've been doing today and i look in front of me and there's plenty more to do there there's plenty more to do over here but at the moment i'm going to go home and have a cup of tea and then edit this and upload it so that it's there on monday morning for you anyway thanks very much for being with me for another quite full week even though i haven't been here that much a week at the plot and I will see you very soon on Planet Vegetaria for further uploads of segments of A Week at the Plot or obviously on YouTube each Monday with a full upload. And if you do have any comments or questions, please put them down below. Um, any advice, any thoughts, then please put those down below as well. And I will see you very soon. Bye.